My brothers and sisters and my beloved confreres, a very hearty welcome to each one of you to this monthly recollection talk in the season of Lent. As all of us are well aware, the season of Lent is at hand. Starting with the Ash Wednesday, we are entering into a serious mode of reflection and attitudinal changes in order to understand the meaning of our Christian life. Sitting back in my room, I sometimes ask a question. What is this Lent all about? Is it a set of rules and regulations that I should practice during the coming 40 days? Or is it all about some fasting and little penances that I shall accomplish? Or is it a conscious choice that I am going to make during the 40 days that I would go to the church for the Mass every day and visit the sacrament of confession? I personally believe those things would remain merely as external ritual practices. What is basically needed is an attitudinal change, an approach to take life in its totality, in its seriousness, understanding my past, my present and my future together is what I am. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, let's look at this Lenten season with a certain sense of practical application, a bit more awareness about my Christian lifestyle. I remind myself about this little story about a young man who went for fishing. He took his fishing hook and went to the river. He threw the fishing hook into the water and was waiting to catch some fish. Time went by and he did not get a single fish. He was rather bored and tired. As he was sitting at the bank of the river, what anyone normally does is to do something that is distractive. He too did the same. He began to take the pebbles that were around one by one and began to throw it into the water. He threw many of those pebbles into the water just to while away his time. As he was collecting the last pebble that was there, he just looked at it and he found to his surprise that it was a pearl. Suddenly he realized, my God, all those things that I was throwing into the water, thinking that they were merely pebbles, were all pearls. Very often this happens to us too. We throw away the pearls in our lives, considering them to be merely pebbles. But sometime or the other, we begin to sit back and seriously decide, my God, I should have been more careful about my life. I believe the season of Lent invites each one of us, my brothers and sisters, to take Jesus seriously, a little more seriously than otherwise. When I look at the person of Jesus, the one thing that enchants me so much is that Jesus is very young. I begin to see him more closely when he was just 12 years of age. And that was the time, as all of us know, he was found missing. Naturally found missing for Joseph and Mary. It is said that Jesus decided to stay back in the temple. And there he realized certain important aspects of his own life. I would call them as enlightenment. 
What were those enlightenment? He discerns, he understands. The temple is my home. Nazareth is not my home. God is my father. Joseph is not my father. Yes, at the age of 12, Jesus comes to certain clarity about his mission. He becomes an enlightened man. I believe this realization that Jesus made in his life is something very important for us. One of those regrets that I have in my life is also the same. That I joined the seminary when I was too young. As a consequence, I could not enjoy my life much, I felt. Perhaps I am trying to enjoy that lost time now, even after my ordination. But you know, I came into a track of thinking more about Jesus, perhaps when I was just 30 years of age. And that was the time I realized, Jesus and I are of the same age. When he began his public ministry, Jesus was 30 years of age. But I was at that time, 30 years of age. Today I can look back and say, he is my younger brother. At the age of 33, having completed his public ministry, Jesus died on the cross. Normally, when a young person dies, we would say, he died too early. In our Indian language, we would say, Akala Charama. Even when someone dies at the age of 40, we would say, he died too early. I remember, when Michael Jackson died, he was 50 years of age. And you know the song that they sang for his burial was the same song which he himself composed and sang earlier. And that was, Gone Too Soon. Gone too soon. Even at the age of 50, when someone dies, we say, he is gone too soon. But is it what we hear about Jesus on the Good Friday? Have we ever heard anywhere a priest preaching that Jesus died too early? Absolutely no. He completed his life. It is accomplished. That's what he said finished. At the age of 33, Jesus completed a serious mission that God had entrusted him with. It is not the number of years that one lives that matters. It is all about the quality of those years that you lived in your life. It's here that I see Jesus as someone to look at where did Jesus begin his public ministry? He began his ministry at the shore of the sea. What is sea and the shore? It is the fringe, the limit of everything. Nothing more is possible. No education, no health, no money, no power, no influence. Shore is the fringe of everything. And the Lord began his ministry at the shore. Therefore, one question that emerges in my mind time and again is this. Who is Jesus for me? Jesus is someone who has come to my shore and he is someone to whom I can reach up when I extend my hands. He is there to be at my side. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we need to ask ourselves this question. Do we merely want to be disciples of Jesus? Or do we want to go a bit more further and become his friends? He himself told, before he went back, I shall no more call you servants. I will call you friends because you share my lifestyle. It is here, my brothers and sisters, 
I began to think about Jesus with three Lenten questions. And those questions are not made by me. They are the most ancient questions that we ever heard in the history of humanity. Three questions that can make the season of Lent very, very meaningful for each one of us. The very first question this Lent would present before us is this. Where are you? Are you in the right place? Or rather to ask the question, have you found the space, the meaning of your life? And this is something very, very serious for us to evaluate, to reflect on. Where are you? Certain times when this question comes to me, I might suddenly say, I'm here in the place where I'm appointed. Or in my family, together with my friends or my family members. But above all, the question is all about the satisfaction that you derive in your very life. Are you in the right place? When this question is asked by God to Adam and Eve, they realized where they are expected to be not behind the bush hiding from the side of God but in the paradise in the freedom of God when I encounter this question the very important incident that comes to my mind is that of Samuel in the Bible little Samuel as all of us know was sleeping in the temple the doors were shut. He was near the sanctuary of the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant. Eli the priest was sleeping outside the temple. And suddenly there arises a voice from the temple, Samuel, Samuel. And what did this little boy do? He got up, he rushed to the door, he opened the door and he went out and asked Eli the priest, did you call me? And did you happen twice, thrice? One of the things that we notice here is this. In spite of the fact that Samuel was inside the temple, that he was near the sanctuary of the Lord, and behind the shut door that only he and his God were present, Samuel could never recognize and understand it is God who is calling me. My brothers and sisters, the question of God, where are you, invites you and me to a life of awareness. A constant awareness of the presence where I really am and the satisfaction that I derive from this place. This is what we call in our Indian terminology as dhyana. Dhyana is different from meditation. Dhyana is a higher perspective of an awareness that I receive in my life in order to become conscious of the meaning of my life. But never think, my brothers and sisters, dhyana or awareness will bring you a lot of peace. Be aware. This concept of the dhyana will only bring you divisions. And that's why very clearly Jesus himself says, I have not come here on the face of the earth to bring you peace. I have come with a sword. I have come to divide you. Yes, you will be divided over the things that you have done and have not done. A little woman was standing in the temple with her child in her arms. There comes an old man, the priest Simeon. He takes this child in his hands now, lifts it up towards God and looking at heavens, he says, 
This child shall be the cause for the fall and rise of many in Israel. And through your soul a sword shall pierce. Why should a sword pierce through the soul of Mary? Because this child whom you are carrying in your life is a dangerous child. He is the cause for the rise and fall of many in Israel. He is your destination. When you carry the destination that you have in your life, you will be divided. You will be challenged. You will never be at peace. Yes, my brothers and sisters, sometimes at least I have seen this aspect of the division that is happening inside of our own very selves. I was once sitting in my office doing some serious work, completing the article of a journal to be sent for printing. And the secretary comes and tells, Father, there is someone waiting for you at the parlor. And I told her, See, I need to press, finish this article and give it to the press by today evening. Tell him to come tomorrow. The secretary goes back and she tells him and the man goes back. Suddenly, there emerged an awareness inside of me. My God, if I were to be the last one whom this man wanted to meet in his life, with that, I could not write any more. Yes, you will be divided over things that you do and things that you do not do. You know, it's just like even a simple thing that can happen in your life can make you distracted. There is a very interesting story mentioned about a Buddhist monk. He was a very old man. He had long beard. One day he was walking through the street and a group of children came across him and they surrounded him and one among them asked him the question. You know, your beard is very good. It's looking very nice. But I have a question. Tell me, when you sleep on your bed, do you put your beard over the bed sheet or under the bed sheet? And the Buddhist monk who never thought about that told him, you know, I'm not able to say now. I will come back to you and give you an answer tomorrow. He went to the bed and there he was lying down, put first his beard over the bedsheet, then under the bedsheet, over, under. The whole night went on like that. The moral is very clear. You can even get divided because of a beard. Then what about when serious things happen in your life? It's my brothers and sisters. The season of Lent invites us to ask some fundamental questions in our life. Where are you? Are you in the right place? Have you found the meaning, the space of your life? Are you satisfied with the choices that you make in your life? Let's move on to the next question for Lent. And that comes again from the Bible. The question is, where is your love? Naturally, it is written in the Bible, where is your brother? Your brother or your sister is your love. The question that you need to ask yourself is, where is your love? Are you loving the one who is near you? The one who is with you? in your family, in your community, and in your society, in the working place where you are, where is your love? What about your relationships? Are you finding meaning for it? As my brothers and sisters, this is a question that should start us. Where is your love? Looking back into my own personal life, when I evaluate the journey that made in my life, one thing I begin to realize 
and fearfully confess is this. In spite of the fact that I have conducted many retreats, preached many sermons and homilies, encountered people and have counseled them, now when I look at my life and when I was preaching all these about love, I realize I was not at all living love instead. I was speaking about my liking. My brothers and sisters, loving is not liking. We replace the important essential aspect of our life with our own inclinations. Why do you love somebody? Yes, I begin to answer. I look at you and say that I love you because I like certain qualities that are in you. You are looking good. You speak well. You are very humorous, tender in your approach. Therefore, I like you. And I misunderstand my loving and replace that love with liking. You know, it is just like earlier times when arranged marriages were happening in our families. The whole family together with the bridegroom would go to the house of the bride to meet with her. And after having met her, having observed the family situations of the bride, on their way back, the father of the boy asks him, Did you like the girl? And the boy says, I liked her. She is very good looking. She is intelligent. And therefore, I like her. I like her. They get married. But after a couple of months, they were going for a film outside. As they were walking together, a friend of theirs come opposite. And this friend comes to this man and asks him, How is your wife? And there comes the answer. I love her. Experience in living with someone, knowing them through and through with personal experience, makes one to say, I love her. I begin to move away from my liking into a new aspect of loving. Sometimes we can see these things happening in our own families too. When my nephew does naughty things, my brother gives him a beat. Time and again it happens. And he would go and sit somewhere else and cry. His mommy comes to him and tells him, You know, daddy beats you because he loves you so much. A few times when the child hears this, the child dares to ask the mommy, Mommy, daddy loves you too. Why is he not beating you then? Yes, love to some extent is the most ancient lie. Look at our parents. When our own brothers and sisters are beating their children, they are the ones who are coming and stopping them. Do not beat children. And who are these parents who tell us that we should not beat our children? They are the ones who have tied us to the trees and beaten us. But now, life experience have shown them life is something different. Liking is not loving. My impulses are not the ones which are making me today to understand the meaning of my life. As my brothers and sisters, from this aspect, we move to the third question that the Bible puts before us. The Lenten question. And the question is, where is your cross? Where is your cross? You may never find anywhere in the Bible this question written. But the New Testament beautifully would bring hope to us this aspect of the cross of Jesus as the culmination of our Christian lifestyle. We always speak about this aspect of suffering. 
Christianity is badly accused of a grievous mistake it is doing. That is, Christianity always highlights suffering as part of life. But I have some difference regarding that. Neither Jesus nor the Christian community is emphasizing on the aspect of suffering. Suffering, in fact, is part of our life. My brothers and sisters, to love, you have to take up a bit of suffering as well. You need to spend time. You need to be available. You need to pay the price, the cost of your loving. Therefore, suffering becomes a normal aspect of human life and Christianity recognizes that. But the question is, where is your cross? Jesus is inviting us today to move from suffering into a concept of sacrifice. Sacrifice is a higher dimension of Christian way of life. Sacrifice is not something that is forced upon me. It is a surrender of my own life towards something that is higher in my perspective, in my lifestyle. And that's why Jesus calls every suffering that he undergoes with a very special name. And you know what that name is? He calls it as baptism. In our Indian language, it would be known as Jnana Snana. Bathing in awareness. A total awareness that my God, I accept all what you give me with a sense of surrender. It is just like a shower bath. You get into the tub and the water is falling on you without any resistance. You fold your hands over yourself and accept that water that falls on you. And this exactly is what Jesus did when he died on the cross. Cross is a welcome sign for us to understand the meaning of life. He surrendered it and he says, No one has taken my life. I have given it for the redemption of the humanity. Yes, my brothers and sisters, these three Lenten questions should make us aware of the importance of our choices. Where are you? Where is your brother? And where is your cross? Shall we move with Jesus to understand the meaning of these questions? God bless you. Amen.